this is, this is, this is. Welcome back, everybody. What's up? What's up? Uh, I'm feeling good this week, feeling weird. Um, you know how you you feel like your brain is trying to pull you into a negative place? I've been fighting that all week. I've been fighting, trying to stay positive, trying to not yell at people, things like that. Of course, I'm, there's nobody for me to yell at, really. Um, so check it out. I was a complete lunatic the other night, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was out of my car in a parking lot. So let me back up for a second. I was driving to the grocery store and it was nighttime around nine o'clock at night. And do, 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 do. I look over on the ceiling of my car. There's a spider, do, 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 giant spider, do, 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 do. And I'm like, Duh! but I'm driving. I can't crash. I have to just continue driving. And I'm just watching the spider. And I'm looking at the road. I'm watching the spider. And it goes to the back. And I'm like, I, okay. So I pull over as soon as I can in the parking lot of Safeway where I'm going shopping. And it's gone. I'm just like, oh, great. And I'm just looking around for a while. I turn on all the lights. I get my phone flashlight out. And I'm looking around in my car. And it's nowhere. I can't find the spider. It's in a crack somewhere. So, all right, fine. I, I put in my notes, spider, because I'm going to talk to somebody later and I want to remember the spider. And so I go, I go into the store and I get my stuff. And I, by the time I come out and I wasn't in there that long, 20 minutes, maybe I come out. I'm not thinking about the spider at all. I'm just like, da, 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 da. I look at my phone, spider. And I'm like, oh, yeah, spider. I, like my phone reminds me because I look at my notes. Um, <laughs> and I look around. Can't find it anywhere. Sorry, my cord is all messed up. All right, that's better. Um, so I look around. Can't find it anywhere. And I just go, you know what? Spider's going to just do spider things in the corner, in the cracks, and... I'm not going to worry about it. And <laughs> so I like roll, I like get in my car, close the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm outside my car right now and I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, looking for the spider. So now I get back in my car, I pull up, pull out of the space, I go and I'm, I'm in the, I'm, a, I'm in the driveway of, of the parking lot about to turn left into the street, into the main street where cars are, there's cars everywhere really. But uh, as I'm there, as I'm in the driveway about to go up, I I look to my left, which I'm driving, we're driving on the right side, pat, uh, steering wheels on the left side, people, <laughs> in case you were wondering. Maybe you live in the UK, I don't know. Uh, there's a spider right eye level with me, giant spider came down on a web and I'm like, Dah! and I, I, oh, I like freak out. I open my door right as I open my door. There's a car pulling into the driveway. So like pulling into the parking lot of Safeway and I'm pulling out. So my door swings open. The car's like about to hit it and it like swerves over. And I'm like, sorry, I can't explain, you know, I'm not going to explain spider, you know, like, but that's what it was. There's a spider and it's still there. And I'm, st it's still the, me opening the door didn't bring the spider out because it wasn't on the window part of the door. It wasn't on my door. It was inside. It was on the frame part of the car. So when I opened the door, it was still just hanging and I'm just freaking out. I'm like basically on the in the passenger seat right now, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? And I, the windows were rolled down at by now. At some point, at some time during that that whole deal, I rolled down the window because I thought maybe I could blow it. And I try to blow it out, and I'm gonna like roll back the window up so that it's outside the car. It it just it only goes out and then swings it back closer to my face. <laughs> So I'm like, no. And I go back into the passenger seat. And by the way, I'm parked. I've got my hazard lights on at this point. Hazard lights are on. There's car, a car behind me. 
I'm in the passenger seat and I kick my feet up, my foot up, and I kick it and it kicks away and it comes back again. And I'm like, I guess I got to kick it harder. So I do it again and I kick it and I kick it and it flies out and it flies out and puts, it, it falls onto the street or not the street, the driveway, the parking lot driveway area. And I get out, I follow it out and I curb stomp the son of a bitch. Just slam, slam. I'm like beating this, this spider into a pulp because I'm just incensed, right? And I look behind and there's a, the car that's waiting. They're just watching me and I'm like, uh, thank you, uh, spider, you know, like, see ya. And I get in my car and I go. And I was just so amped up after that. It was just insane. But uh, spiders, I don't mind you. I just don't want you in my car or in my house or in my bed. Even in my house is okay as long as it's like near the door or the bathroom. I don't mind them in bathrooms sometimes, but I don't know why that is. Because I feel like I can fight them with water, even though they will crawl back up a drain. Um, but spiders, for the most part, scare me a lot less than they used to. I think it's because, and I've talked about this a little bit before, because being in Texas, there's huge bugs. There's tons of bugs. There's flying bugs. There's crawling bugs. There's salamander. There's little creatures everywhere. There's big creatures everywhere. So I, coming back to Washington, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no real bugs here. You know, we have spiders. That's it, spiders. Very valid thing to be scared of. But I think because of the Texas thing, because there's so many more creepy crawly things to be scared of there, Spiders don't really bother me anymore. I'm just like, hey, spider, what's up? We're just, you're a you're a, a, a part of the animal kingdom, just like I am. Sure, I feel like I'm a little smarter than you, but it doesn't mean you don't deserve to live. So if, if you're, if there's a spider outside, I don't kill those spiders. I just leave them be. But I draw the line at my car. Do not come into my car. And in fact, I don't even mind if a little t spider is in my car, but big spiders got to draw the line somewhere all right let's get to some voicemails you guys i want to hear from you um if you want to be on the podcast not as a guest but as a voicemail guest i guess uh you could call in leave a voicemail ask me a question uh maybe you have a certain topic you want me to cover the number is 360-830-6660 and of course, mxpx.com, please sign up for our mailing list, sign up for our text mailing list. All of that is on mxpx.com. It's really, really hard to find our fans these days. And, and I think a lot of bands, not just us, are having that problem. So if you post something, if we post something, it, it gets you know a, a fraction of the traffic that it used to get. So you know, if you're on that mailing list, it's going to be a lot easier to get the information from us when we have a show, when we have a new album, when we have new songs coming out, you're going to be, it'll be in your e email box or it'll be in your text message or both. For me, I follow both. I like to get them both. All right. I just wanted to mention that. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. These, uh, your voicemails are great. You guys have been doing a great job. Um, there's no ladies, though, lately, so we need some more ladies to call in, feeling, uh, even if it's the same ladies, feel free, call back in, give us, uh, give us your point of view, we want to hear from you ladies, all right, and guys, just keep it coming, you guys are doing great, uh, love your topics, all right, here's the first one, let's get it going. Hey, Mike, this is Shane from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, started listening to you guys back in like 98 with the slowly going the way of the buffalo. Uh, I met you 10 years ago with uh, Tumble Down uh, at a small Scottsdale venue and uh, wanted to say thank you for coming back to Phoenix back in I think it was June. April. This year. Uh, I saw you at the marquee. Had a great time. Uh, with my wife. Awesome. Checking you guys out. That, that was the first time I've ever seen you uh, with MXPX, so I was really, really excited about that. Um, my question 
is uh, the song GSF. Uh, does that stand for Girls Schmurls Foundation? <laughs> uh, I don't know where I got that from, but uh, what is what is what foundation? Uh, I don't know where I got that from, but uh, what is what's the story behind that song? Um, so yeah, the Girls Schmurls Foundation. Thought that was interesting. Um, thank you, man, and uh, keep making good music. Bye. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, sorry. I, that was my fault on the... I clicked a weird button and it, like, reset your, your voicemail. But anyway, um, thank you for coming and checking out the show in Phoenix. That was in April. It feels like June. I totally get it. But that was April. That was a little while ago. But it, it feels like it was yesterday. Um, we are going to be in Montreal coming up. Uh, St. Therese for Music for Cancer Fest. MXPeaks.com. I think tickets are going on sale, like... Probably by the time you hear this pot, this episode, they're on sale. I thought they were on sale already, but I don't think they were. Um, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. That's way up in Canada. I don't expect you to make it, Shane, but for anybody up there in, in, in Quebec, uh, come on. And it's going to be a while. It's been 2019 was the last time we were in Montreal. So we'll be back 2022, September 17th. Music for Cancer Fest. And everybody's, it's so funny talking about music for cancer because they're like, I'm not for cancer, I'm against cancer. I'm like, yeah, me too. But I think it was, uh, it's like one of those French, French Canadian translation, lost in translation thing where they're like, we're doing this for cancer benefit people, you know, or whatever, but not for actual cancer. <laughs> you guys get it. You guys get it. Um, Phoenix, yeah. So we had a great time in, in, in Phoenix. It was uh, it had been a long time since we had played there as well, probably even longer, probably closer to five, six, seven years, eight years proper. Um, so it was great to be back, and we will be back. Um, all right, GSF, let me get to your question. I'm glad you think it's interesting because it is pretty a pretty ridiculous story. So we were recording... I want to say it was on the cover. Might have been poking at you, but I think it was on the cover. Where? No, on the cover was recorded by Bob Moon. See, I think it it was. Um, yeah, I guess it could have been. It could have been. Teenage Politics was recorded by Bob Moon. So, so it was. It was definitely a vast. Now the reason why I'm 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 trying to remember the timeline is because it was pretty early, excuse me, in our in our career, meaning I think we were still still in high school. So this could have been teenage politics. All right, let's just say it was around teenage politics. Matt from from the band Blenderhead, the drummer, Matt Johnson, was uh, we were good friends back in those days, and he would always come by and hang out. Probably had nothing better to do. So he'd come by and hang out while we were in the studio. And, and one day, Yuri got off the phone with his, his girlfriend at the time and was sad. He was very sad. And he was like moping around. And Matt goes, what's wrong? You know, or we all did or whatever. And, and uh, Yuri's like, my girlfriend broke up with me. And he's just bumming, you know. And uh, I'm sure he was like, let's party. My girlfriend broke up. <laughs> and Matt goes, girl smells, forget her, forget her. And that gave me the idea to write Girl Schmurl's Foundation, which is the club that all us guys are in after we get broken up with by girls. So it was a, it was a you know, kind of a solidarity song for Yuri. Um, and it's not meant to be taken seriously, although I think you can definitely like relate to it, you know, because we've all gone through heartbreak and most of us most of us have gone through heartbreak so gsf is just a light-hearted look at uh a very real uh, situation that happened so that's it cool great topic all right next hey mr mike this is Jaden from rapid city 
I gotta tell you, I am probably your biggest fan in the whole state of South Dakota. Like that, I I say that without a doubt. Um, I was just I just want to call and say how much I love your music. It is like it is so great. I probably listen to it on a daily basis. Favorite song? Thank you. Probably Let's Ride. That Dude, music video just completes it. Anyways, I just love your music. I love you, Jaden. I was. You should totally play at the Monument here in South Dakota. That, that's that's the place. That's what it's called. You should totally come down here and play. I mean, I don't know how many people would show up, but I'll tell you, I would be there. <laughs> I would absolutely be there. Um, thanks for thanks for giving me a moment. Bye. You're the best, Jaden. Thank you so much. Thanks for your call. Rapid City, South Dakota. I don't think I've ever been there. Um, I've been to North Dakota. Well, I've been to South Dakota, but not Rapid City. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on the list. I'll write the monument. I'll write that down. We'll see what's up. I would hope that more than just you, Jaden, would would show up to an MXP show <laughs> in South Dakota. We've played there before. Uh, had a great time. I think Tumble Downs even played South Dakota before. But um, yeah. Thanks for your call. Hey, Mike, this is Chris, but my friends call me Stones. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the recent birthday or anniversary of MXPX. I was probably a fan for most of those years. I first heard of MXPX when Poconacha was out, but not when it was new. It was right before uh, Teenage Politics came out. Um, so I had a couple questions for you, and I heard on one of the recent podcasts Someone asked a question about old merch and bringing back old merch designs. Um, my question for you, I kind of I kind of argue that I probably have the biggest MXPX uh, memorabilia collection, and I was wondering if you knew of anyone else that might rival that. Um, and then the second question I have is, do you, do you collect your own stuff, and is there anything out there that you know exists um, that you would like to get a hold for yourself? Uh, either because it was limited edition or 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 something something very rare. Uh, there's a couple pieces I am actually looking for, and that is okay. I'm going to pause there because I don't want to forget your questions. <laughs> um, thank you, by the way, Stones. What's up? Um, I'm trying to think. Buddy from uh, you know frequently seen on the MXPX Facebook group. Um, he's got a pretty big collection, but I don't know if he's got the biggest. He he may have the biggest vinyl collection, but if you have like merchandise, like T-shirts, um, there's a guy named Ryan from, I want to say Bismarck, maybe not Bismarck, from somewhere in the Dakotas or somewhere like that. Um, it wouldn't take me long to find out, but he's got a pretty insane MXPX T-shirt collection. He's got... MXPX, I think he, on Instagram he has a, he has a uh, an account that says like Ryan's MXPX T-shirts or MXPX T-shirts. I think if you if you search that you might find that. But I mean, who's to say who has the biggest merch collection? Because these things kind of go down. It's kind of like billionaires in the world. You know, we don't always know because people don't always tell us. Um, we know in the United States, usually, um, when U S citizens are super rich cause they file their taxes and, and, but there's probably a ton of people out there in the world. I digress. There's a lot of people out there. I don't know who's got the biggest collection. That's a great question. Don't know. Does somebody else possibly know? Maybe people could, uh, call back in and be like, yeah, I've got the biggest not you. I've got the biggest collection. So uh, we'll get a uh, MXPX collection contest happening. Um, all right. Second part of the question. Do I collect anything? Any MXPX memorabilia? Um, I, I collect all our albums. So if, if, it's, if it's on vinyl, I have it. If, if it's a, an official release, I have it. Um, But I wouldn't say I have a complete collection or I collect it in the same way that, like, say, a fan would. Um, 
sorry to call you guys fans, um, <laughs> yeah, a listener. Um, but, but uh, you know, I've collected things from other people, you know, other bands. You know, I used to collect, try, I tried to collect all of the all albums on cassette. And when, when, when it, I was almost done collecting, I almost had, and I had bought these things, you know, just little by little as I could, could afford them from a store from a store and and as as i could find them and it was peaches i think peaches or budget tapes and disc one of the two back in the mid 90s i would say um maybe it was early 90s actually now that i think about it but that that i collected those up until cds came out and then i was just like what i gotta collect cds now no i'm done you know and i i stopped col I, I would collect things just to listen to rather than collect every album just to own it you know so it switched my collecting after that but um no there's nothing really that i collect collect as far as mxp stuff just i just make sure that i have a copy of of vinyl of everything and a copy of uh if there's a cd i usually try to have one of those but over the years it gets hard it gets hard and harder harder and harder to to maintain collections as they grow and as they you know as they become obsolete in some ways like you could say cds are somewhat obsolete although some people a very small amount of the, the population still enjoy them so all right let's get on to your third part I heard there's a promotional snow globe oh. that the record label uh created for i believe it was before everything and after I'm looking for one of those, and I'm also looking for the CD that um, Mountain Dew put in their, like, 12-packs, I guess it was, that had songs on it from other bands doing songs about Mountain Dew, mm -hmm. and you had, uh, MXPX had the Mountain Dew song on it. I have yet to find a physical copy of that as well. So uh, if you could let me know, do you collect some of your own stuff? Is there certain things that you hold on to, and uh, what, what might those things be? Uh, great podcast, great band. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was kind of just attached to the first part of that, second part of that question. Um, the snow, the snow globe's awesome. Um, I think I have one. I think I have one. Um, but so it's like things like that. I will collect, um, not as a completist, meaning I don't have to have every single thing that that's come out like that, but. If, if it's easy enough to grab, like, say, um, something else like MXPX, every time we sell out the Anaheim House of Blues, for some reason, they have a policy where if you sell out the Anaheim House of Blues, you get skateboards. All the band members get skateboards. And so they have an in-house artist that does their own design for you. You don't get to choose it or anything, and then they give it to you. And um, those are some kind of cool to, to keep as collector's items. But it's a skateboard, you know, so it's like... On a rainy day, if if I need a skate deck, I've got a couple laying around. But the Mountain Dew CD, that is very, very, that's one that's like super, super deep, super way out there. Um, I think I had a CD back in the day when that thing happened, but... I could just be confused with something else. Um, I don't know. I definitely don't think I have a copy of that. I mean, sure, maybe if I like rifled through all of the junk I have laying around here at the studio or my house, find some CDs, find one in there. But I, I don't really remember that. Um, I remember mostly hearing that on the radio. We'd hear it on 107.7 The End, which is uh, you, uh, our Seattle alternative station here in in the northwest and then that's about it you know like i don't really i don't really remember what else it was on but like that's the thing it's like you do these things and they go out and they people hear them and i don't hear them you know so um and and there's been other things like that that people have brought brought up and wanted signed and i'm just like looking at this thing and just like turning it over and just going what what is i've never seen this I've never heard of this before what is this so i mean there's a few of those out there too but uh 
Yeah. Cool. That's, that's a fun one. You know, I, I, the Mountain Dew thing, you know, the, the fact that I didn't, I I didn't remember that there was a CD until you mentioned it here. Cause I, you know, if, if somebody would have said, Hey, you know, what's up with that Mountain Dew song? I would have been like, yeah, well, you know, it was a spot we did for Mountain Dew and it was on radio. It was like mainly a, it was an audio spot. So it was radio, you know, and I actually wrote, you know, if you want to know a little bit more about the actual song, I wrote that song for Mountain Dew for that commercial and was asked to write a song and they gave me a couple buzzwords, like key phrases kind of thing that they said, like, this is kind of what we're, we're working with. Um, these are our catchphrases. So if you like, uh, of course, say Mountain Dew all you want and, and this and that. And, you know, so I just came up with it was around the time that that came out around the time that we were doing the Broken Bones stuff. Um, the Broken Bones EP came out. So we were doing major label stuff at that point. But we would just uh, get into our studio and what do you want to, wait, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to drink Mountain Dew tonight? And I said like, Mountain Dew in my heart and in my head. Mountain Dew, I don't remember the words exactly, but it was like, it was just like giving like Mountain Dew all the praise. (laughs) And I liked Mountain Dew. I, I used to drink it. Um, right out of high school, around high school and after high school, those, those years that were, those were my, like the after high school years were like my, my Taco Bell for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, Mountain Dew, 40 ounces, like full on, you know, like that's what was, people did back then, like, you know, that's what people did back then. That's what my friends did back then. We drank Mountain Dew and we ate Taco Bell and Oh, so funny. Um, yeah, so it's always fun. I, I've written I've written songs about things I love uh, all throughout my career, for sure, for sure. All right, let's see what's next. Hey, Mike. My name is Ryan Hayden. I called you a couple months ago, probably the annoying guy bugging you for one of your pit guards. But uh just want to say thanks for reading my message on the uh, show. I'm going to see you guys on September 17th my 30th birthday in Montreal. So I'm so psyched. You guys couldn't have given me a better gift. Um, and since I'm always asking you for annoying shit, uh, I would love to play cold and all alone with you guys. But hey, I know that. It's a big <laughs> ass. I love you guys. Take care. I'll see you September 17th in Montreal regardless. Love you guys. Bye. Ryan, what's up, man? Thank you. Happy birthday coming up. Um, we, we planned it for you, so just just roll with that. Um, 30th birthday, that's a good birthday. That's that's like you're finally an adult, right? You're not just some punk kid, right? <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see about, about Cold and All Alone. You know, we hadn't even, we're kind of like putting together the set now. Um, still tweaking some stuff here and there. I guess we could add it, but how do we get, you know, it's one of those things, you know, when we, When we, the thing is, is you asked, Ryan, you're not supposed to ask publicly. Now, um, now it feels forced or it feels planned. So my suggestion is you got to do it like the day of or the day before where it's like a fresh thing and it'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Or, or even literally, you know, like right before we go on stage, you know, if you talk, like, that's the thing. It's like, it's so hard to. It's it's so hard to like one plan things like that, but also it's really hard to just do things spontaneously. Uh, that's what we prefer always is is being spontaneous. But um, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's find out. Let's find out together. No matter what, like you said, it's going to be a badass show. We are looking forward to it. We are working hard to be able to fly across that stage and and you know remember all our songs. I've been doing pretty well, actually. I'm remembering remember, remembering them all really well. Um, but yeah, you know, like anything, it's uh, it's uh, always you just never know. So it's an unknown. What will the show be like? I think I know, 
but it's never exactly what you think in your mind. Like, you know, when, when we were kids, I went to summer camp a few times as a kid, probably like late elementary school, early junior high kind of thing. And I remember having a, a thought in my mind of what this was going to be like. And it's never exactly that. It's great, but it's different. It's always different. And and I think if if we have that reminder everywhere we go in life, it's a lot harder to be disappointed. Now, Ryan, this has nothing to do with you. You are going to have the time of your life. It'll be your birthday. But the thing is, is you can't, I can't plan to party too hard or else it just doesn't work out. You know, it kind of has to be just like, let's just see what happens. And then boom, it's a crazy party. You feel it? You feel me? All right, let's go with that. Um, let's do one more. Thank you guys so much. Please, if you want to call in, be part of the podcast, leave me a voicemail, give me a question, give me a topic, give me a whatever, and we'll talk about it. The number is 360-830-6660. All right, here's one more for you guys. And uh, I have a guest next week, but I don't want to say who it is because I haven't done the, the, the interview yet, but I do have a guest next week. All right, I will see you next Monday. Hey, Mike. My name's Kyle. I was just calling to get a little parenting advice from you. So uh, so we have an 11-year-old daughter, and uh, I was just wondering how you deal with having a job that's kind of non-conventional but still try and parent the kids to the best of your ability. So, uh, so personally I brew beer for a living and, uh, my daughter loves what I do. She's very proud of me. I'm very proud of what I do, but, uh, it's also something that's kind of looked down on in our community. And I know, uh, being in a punk rock band, is probably not the coolest thing for a lot of parents in your schools and stuff. And just trying to figure out how you deal with that. Uh, yeah. So, my number is 603 Yeah. 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 Love to hear from you. Love your music. Love your podcast. Thanks, man. Bye. Thanks for calling, Kyle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you your answer on the podcast, so I won't probably call you back, but thank you for calling. Check this out. Uh, I think people usually do look down on, on giving children alcoholic beverages. So if you're doing that, then yeah, I could see how people would have a problem with it. But like me giving punk rock to the children What's the issue, bro? <laughs> like, <laughs> but the unconventional job, I hear you. Yeah, that, that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the unconventional, non-conventional parenting or lifestyle. That is a thing. That's a real thing. And I would not, for, for instance, I, obviously you don't feed your kid alcohol, but maybe you take your work home with you, but you don't, you don't take your work to your kids. Um, don't worry about it. I think your job is cool for one, like being a brew, like a, a beer brewer, whether it's actually brewing the beer, working, you know, owning the brewery, uh, all of the above, right? Like that is a cool job in my opinion. And you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You shouldn't worry about it. You shouldn't feel like it's even non-conventional. I feel like, honestly, being in a punk band is way more non-conventional. But maybe your hours are non-conventional. Maybe the, the work hours you have. I don't know. You tell me. Maybe call me back and let me know. But um, I wonder what's so non-conventional about what a beer brewer does. Um, if you're talking about the alcohol, well, I mean, food can kill you, you know? The, <laughs> so... You know, so like, so somebody that's like making food could be seen as non-conventional. So yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that, honestly. But if you're talking about the hours you work or the way you dress or whatever, okay, I can, I can understand that. But how do I deal with being in, in a punk band and living in this world we live in and, and not necessarily fitting into society? Well, um, for one, I feel very comfortable in my own skin. I feel comfortable doing what I do. And sure, the, the outside forces can try to cause some FOMO now and again, fear of missing out, can try to cause a little bit of uh, anxiety. Am I doing the right thing? Did I choose the right path? And honestly, I think what I've learned is no matter what you do, it's going to be hard. Now, parenting, you know, dealing with the kids. Um, 
we're very open about you know what what we do with the band and you know all that but at the same time the kids don't really care so it's just more about like about getting them excited about their lives and how can I fit into their life the best you know and they definitely get bummed if I can't be around um every single night you know sometimes we practice well quite often we practice and usually when I practice I can't be there around dinner time and after that you know putting them to bed all that stuff so like they understand they don't like it but they understand that I'm working you know and but they also like that I can be with them during the day in and not have to rush out to an office or, or something like that and if there truly is something important I can move things around very easily with what my schedule is like as long as it's not like an actual show booking or you know live stream or something like that that that's kind of set in stone but the whole lifestyle thing of being in a band and being a musician it's something that some people might i don't know feel bad about or look, feel like people are looking down on them with but honestly i feel <laughs> i don't want to i'm trying to be humble but if people look at my life and they, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of or to be embarrassed about or to feel weird about because I've actually probably in a position that most of these other parents want to be in, or it's not like people would want my life, but they would definitely want the thing, you know, want to have the experiences that I've had or, or you know, have done. And, and I don't know, it's a hard question to answer without being like a dick. Uh, when I talk about my own experiences and how I feel honestly like I, I don't fit into society and I don't care and I'm glad and I, but at the same time I can fit in, like I can go to the store and not cause a stink. I can go and do, I'm just saying I don't fit into the society as, you know, having the exact thing that I need to do at the exact times. So like, um, you know, I have kids and I hang out with them and we homeschool them and, my wife takes them to on field trips all the time and they, they do extracurricular activities and they're super smart, super active. And a lot of that is because we have the lifestyle of me being in a band and it allows us to be flexible. The fact that I am not tied down to just one location, we can move around and do stuff. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge, uh, uh, I guess it's some a huge opportunity for me to spend as much time as I can with my kids before they're old enough to where they don't care about me anymore and they're just doing their thing, right? So like it's very real and it's very much more than just being in a band. It's it's uh it's of course the most important thing in my life is my family, but also my band. My band is my family. Like uh, how can you choose one or the other? To me, the, they're they're one and the same. And MXPX is just as important as my family, but there are priorities. And there are obviously things that you do. You schedule time for this, you schedule time for that. But I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I don't know, I couldn't think of MXPX as anything lesser than the most important thing in my life and of course my kids are and my wife are more important than that but like but honestly it's can you can you can you have more than one thing that's important i don't know some people would say that's impossible you have to choose one and if you haven't chosen you've made the choice already by default i get it but i really feel like mxpx is so much part of my life that i am like part MXPX. And so if I'm with my family, I'm also spending time with MXPX because it's with me. It's always me. So I don't even know what I just said. And if it made, it probably made no sense at all. And I didn't plan this out or anything. So I apologize if it makes no sense, but uh, that's where we're at today. I'm going to stand by it a little bit, I guess. I think, I think what I said, even if it didn't make sense, was technically right um i love my family i love my mxpx family you know things things have changed in our family as we go you know we have a new puppy and that's changed our whole schedule around quite a bit just 
you know, when you first get a puppy, you got to watch it all the time. You got to make sure it knows where the bathroom is outside, 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 like reinforce, reinforce. And she's doing great. Charlie is her name doing great at it. Um, but things change over the years and that's just another thing that changes. And can, will Charlie have an effect on MXPX? Probably somehow because not in a bad way, just in a way that changes something. Right. So I've been reading these books, this, you know, this guy, uh, I can't even remember the name of the author. These, these books by, uh, the author is Blake Crouch. So I just finished this book called Dark Matter, and the other book is called Recursion that I read by him. Both are, I don't want to say too much in case you read them, but they deal with the multiverse and all this crazy stuff and just how choices in, in life, you know, can, can really change what happens. Just really, really simple choices. Boom, 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 you know. Sliding doors, sliding windows, right? Um and so what I'm saying is by us getting a new puppy, that might change a little bit of like, it'll change what video I put out next or what song I write next, just because maybe I was going to write this song, but since I had to watch the puppy and I came to the studio a couple hours later than I would, I wrote this other song or you, you get what I'm saying, right? So like life is like that. Like each little decision branches out into where your path leads and um well the path is leading to ending this podcast right now thank you guys so much i appreciate you uh, listening to me ramble i'd love to get some some uh not even feedback but i'd love to just conversation you know hit us up in the facebook mike herrera podcast group um if you're not already a member you can ask to join it should be pretty automatic i think um, once you get to a certain amount of people, they just have a bot that just approves you. Um, but that's on Facebook. On Instagram, it's My Career Podcast. On, you know, th these are all just so you can see who the guests are when the new podcast comes out each week. But I do check them. So if you do comment on any of those, even on the Twitter one, I will see it and uh, I'll comment back. So let me know if any of this made sense or if it made no sense. Let me know that too. Ladies, I want to hear from you. So call in next week or any any week. Any, call in right after you listen to this. 360-830-6660. Would appreciate it. Would love to hear from you. And um, mxpeaks.com, thanks for listening. We're still brewing up some stuff. Um, Bob McKnight, he's anxiously waiting for me to send him this podcast so he can edit it and get it up. So... I will end and send it to him. Thanks, Bob. Check out his podcast. It's called The Bob and Katie Show. Really fun, lighthearted, weird situations. Yeah, real fun. All right. Peace. Peace.